What's going on veterans, it's JB coming to you live. I am 100% permanent total Navy Desert Storm veteran. And today's message is going to be talking about CMP intel. We're going to get the intelligence on our opponents before we go into the CMP exam. Before I get started, I want you to take the time out right now to subscribe to this channel. Also, if you want to like or comment, uh, click on the notification bell to receive new videos as we post them online. We do appreciate your uh, viewership, and we do also appreciate you taking action with the information we're about to explore. Now, my thing is this. When we're in the military, we get intelligence reports on our opponents, okay? So we can have rules of engagement, okay? We go through the situation room and find out what's, that, what's the problem, uh, where the subject is that we need to go ahead and encounter. We get all types of data in before we take the rules of engagement uh, to action. Well, doesn't it make sense, ladies and gentlemen, when you're going up against a multi-billion dollar organization, the largest healthcare provider in the United States, doesn't it make sense to gain intel before you file? There's a lot of veterans that are watching my videos that have filed incorrect claims, wrong theories, claiming direct when they claim secondaries or just throwing things in the air. You, you're claiming three different mental disorders when they're only going to take one of them. You're claiming PTSD, anxiety, and depression, three different disabilities, but they're already the same. Under one thing, you get told all of this side information from different veterans and veteran service officers and attorneys and veteran advocates and gurus online. You get confused and overwhelmed. Well, let's stop the madness today and let's cover some things according to the law. Ladies and gentlemen, my company, New Life Veterans, we don't teach on theory. We teach on law, Title 38, Part 4. And so the CMP exam is designed by law from Congress. Those two laws are Title 38, United States Code 5103, Alpha, and 7301, Bravo. Okay, that is the law, Title 38, United States Code. Then you have Title 38, Code of Federal Regulations 3.159.3.326. I know that's a lot of numbers and it doesn't mean anything to you, but I want you to know that New Life Veterans only teaches on congressional law because I don't want you to get confused by hearsay. I don't want to get you confused by third party information, all right? So by law, okay, because disability, ladies and gentlemen, is at the intersection of law and medicine. You got the congressional law and then you got the medicine part of it when it comes to physicians examining you, okay? So, to enforce this law, they use the Office of Disability and Medical Assessment. Again, to enforce these laws, the Office of Disability and Medical Assessment and the Employee Education System has designed a curriculum. Ladies and gentlemen, when you get your CMP notification uh, letter in the mail, it's going to tell you uh, key QTC, VS, whoever company that, that contracts, it's going to talk about the doctor that you're going to see, the, the, the area of specialty, how many years they've been uh, practicing, how many years they've been doing VA CMP exams, and what kind of training that they've had to be a CMP examiner. That's right. They go through rigorous web-based training. I want you to understand how they enforce it is web-based. A web-based certification module to certify the examiners. The certify, that means that they have to pass the test online to be certified by the VA before they can do even one CMP examiner. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what type of web-based in, um, information do they study? And I'm sorry about going off the camera. And I'm sorry I'm not having my microphone on today, but I had to get this video out quick, okay? Because I love every last one of you veterans, and I care about you guys taking care of your disabilities, your injuries for you and your family. I was homeless, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't have any of this available. I didn't have this tool. I didn't have this channel. I didn't have none of the resources that you have today to file for my disability. Okay, and I waited a lot of years. I got out in 1995. I did not. I did not uh, file to 2019. That's 24 years that I missed out on unpaid disabilities tax free. I don't want you to wait 24 years. Okay, so let's talk about the five mandatory courses because I want you to understand what you're going up against. A lot of you veterans are asking me, do I still have to go to a CMP exam 
if I got my medical nexus or uh, I got this evidence and all of this stuff. I want you to understand that this law governs CMP exams. And if you want to bank on not going to one, it's sadly mistaken. Because they're going to protect the Brinks truck, if you will. There's a Brinks truck, ladies and gentlemen, that has your name on it. That has a quarter of a million dollars in it to a million dollars of benefits. That depends on your rating and depending on how many years you got left on this planet. We're guaranteed 78 years on this planet. Some less, some even more. Look at your current age right now. How many years you have left to get to 78 without the high value claim of 100% or 80 to 100%, okay? So that's going to tell you how much you're missing out and that's on the line. The five mandatory courses that every CMP exam or examiner has to pass every time they want to help the veterans in their opinion. There's a general certification. There's a general certification. Okay. Overview. The reason why I'm telling you this, I want you to understand the psychology of the CMP exam. Military sexual trauma. They have to go through this. Every last one of them. Sexual trauma. I wonder why you think they got to go through sexual trauma uh, certification. Because it's very prevalent in the military for its disability claims. Medical opinions. Wow. There's a course on medical opinions? Absolutely. Why is there a course on medical opinions, veterans? Because there are the whole job as a CMP examiner is to do what? Examine you and make an opinion according to the law and medicine. Now, these doctors are not lawyers, correct? They're trying to interpret law with medicine to make an opinion. So the VA is going to train them according to the VA standards. Now, I got a question to ask you before I go over the number four, number five. Do you really think that the VA CMP examiner is your friend in the VA disability process? Absolutely not. Okay. Now, aggravation opinions. So, wait a minute. You mean to tell me they're going through more training on opinions than anything else, Julius? Absolutely. Isn't it important to know who your opponent is? Before you try to get into the end zone of 80 to 100%, you got an opponent right here that's been trained on aggravated opinions and medical opinions. So if they've been trained on medical opinions and aggravation opinions, that means secondary claims. What has aggravated something else? What does that mean for you? Then they got Gulf War General Medical Exam. Why do they need the training on Gulf War Medical Exams? Because most of your claims that are being filed lately has been dealing with Gulf War injuries. Gulf War injuries. Shout out to my Gulf War vets. I'm a Gulf War vet. I, I serve in the Southwest Area Theater of Operations. I am a Desert Storm veteran as well. So you guys got to know. And I served from 1991 to 1995. So you got to understand. So there's more in opinions. More training in opinions. So if they got more training in opinions, shouldn't you go to the gunfight? With a gun instead of a knife by having your own opinions from your private non-VA doctors? Doesn't it make sense? If the third element of service connection, ladies and gentlemen, deals with a medical nexus opinion. The third element of service connection deals with medical nexus opinions. We need a doctor to examine you, put his license on the line, to make an opinion that is least as likely as not that this is linked to military service and also provide medical rationale and open his practice up for scrutiny for the VA to call that office and investigate that opinion. There's more training on opinions, medical opinions and aggravation opinions than any of the five that you see here. Doesn't it make sense to have your opinion? Because they definitely gonna make an opinion and it's gonna carry the most weight in your disability process, okay? Now, 
Some of you are filing specialty type of disabilities. Let's go over that real quick. These are general web-based training certifications that they all have to pass and be certified for. But let's go a step further. You might be filing for a specialty type of examination. And let me just give you an example. The four specialists that they use for disability specialties, and I probably mentioned that wrong, but is audiologist, number one, psychologist, dental and vision. All right, so the special specialist, again, if you're claiming a mental disorder, so they got psychologist. That's one of the most prevalent claims, mental health. Uh, audiologist. Audiologist, all right. These are specialists, all right. Dentist for dental. Um. Um, vision, uh, optical, opticians, if I'm, if I'm right or wrong on that type of specialty of an eye doctor, I'm just going to put in parentheses, I'm not medically inclined always, I'm just going to put in parentheses eye doctor. These are the four specialty CMP examinations that have to be done by these type of people, no, none of that general stuff. They can't send you to a nurse practitioner or just a nurse, uh, nursing assistant C CMP examiner. If you're claiming... Mental disorders, PTSD, anxiety, you know, anxiety disorders, depression, schizophrenia, that's what you're going to see. If you're claiming tinnitus or hearing loss, you're going to see an audi audiologist. So you need to have, to combat that person, you need your own. You need your own psychologist. You need your own audiologist. You need your own dentist. You need your own opt op 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 ophthalmologist. Right there, okay? So dentists, that's self-explanatory, dental issues, all right? All right, and then the eye doctor, eye issues, of course. You're dealing with uh, glaucoma, I guess. Uh, I'm just naming something. These are the type of specialists you need to get your own medical nexus for because they're going to have additional training that got to be certified by the VA. Now, let's talk about this real quick. Um... The ones that they specialize the most, I'm going to tell you, the most specialized the most recently in the claim process, the disabilities. I'm going to erase these real quick because now you know you can't claim a mental disorder, anxiety, depression, you know, mood disorder, alcohol use disorder, all that good stuff without having your own psychology. So the specialized exams that they have to go, number one, is PTSD exams. That's the number one that the VA trains through their portal, train.org. All right? Now, initial mental health exams. Initial mental health exams. They're going to get certified additional training in that. Number three, musculoskeletal, dealing with your bones. Joints, degenerative joint disease, all that type of stuff. Lower radiculopathy, lower extremities. Number four, can anybody tell me what number four is? Number four is TBI, traumatic brain injury. Traumatic. They're going through additional certification. These are the four that these CMP examiners uh, are going to... Um, be additionally trained on to, to, to keep you from your money. Remember, I said there's a quarter of a million dollars to a million dollars left in a Brinks truck with your name in it, but you got to go through this to get that delivered to your bank account direct deposit, okay? Now, since you know the intel of the CMP examiners, you don't know they went to college, they went to medical school, and uh, now they're getting contract work from the VA. These are additional money outside their practice, so they're motivated to make even more money. They don't care what the outcome of the opinion is. They're jaded no matter what. But let me ask you, what's the mentality of a person that's paid by an entity? Let's talk about your employer right now. What's your relationship-wise with your employer? All right? Your relationship with your employer is to help that business make money so you can get a paycheck every two weeks, right? 
So what do you think the psychology is of a CMP examiner who's getting paid by the VA direct deposit just like you are if you're getting paid right now? What are they going to be jaded towards the veteran or they're going to be jaded towards the VA? Of course, they're working for the VA and they're going to have their uh, blessings. So everything they write in that examination and making an opinion, the VA is going to hold it in high regard. So it behooves you to know that these doctors have been trained in these areas. I talked about the five areas that they are trained in on the general certification, the military sexual trauma, uh, the medical opinions, and the aggravated opinions, and the Gulf War. You can't go in there just started claiming stuff and saying, I got this and I got that. You can have it all day long. It's going to be listed under favorable findings in your uh, decision letter. Well, with favorable findings, we see that you've been diagnosed. That does nothing for you. It's going to say not service connected. They're going to say, oh, we see you've been diagnosed and we see that you had an in-service event. That means nothing to you. So you meet two, you've met two elements of service connection. It's still going to read not service connected. Why? Because element number three says you have to have a medical nexus opinion if you've been separated from the military more than 12 months. I got out in 1995. I served, I submitted my paperwork 2019. Has that been 12 months? Yes, it was 24 years. You can't possibly, Junius, tell me that you're suffering from hypertension from the military 24 years ago. You can't tell me that you're suffering from um, sleep apnea, excuse me, from 24 years ago. You can't tell me you've been suffering from PFB, no shaving, you're still getting bumps 24 years ago. Where's your nexus? Where's your uh, medical opinion? Because I'd have already trained, I've already trained my CMP examiners on aggravated opinions and medical opinions. They're gonna, they've already been briefed by us. Ladies and gentlemen, I just uncovered the real ugly truth that the VA is training these doctors according to what the VA, the law says, the Title 38, the U.S. United States Code and the Code of Federal Regulations, they got to go through well-based training, not classroom and in-person in in class, but well-based all over the country to handle all of the 20-some million veterans out there. All right? And you wonder why they're making mistakes. You'll wonder why they're, they're, they're making these uh, opinions that they're, they're not in your favor. You got all these pending disabilities. You got backlogs and all this stuff going in. Veterans are catching on now because of social media. And so there's no, more claims now that's been submitted to the VBMS system than ever before. It's double the volume. They're getting bombarded with a lot of things. And these doctors are signing up as quickly as they get an advertisement, make more money with the VA. Their motivation, the doctor's motivation is to make money. Not to make money with giving you a service connection with a high value claim. They're to make a check from the VA to examine you and to make an opinion. That's all they're getting paid for. Whether that opinion is favorable or unfavorable, right? You don't want to go into a gunfight with a knife by not you knowing the intel on that CMP examiner and know what they're looking for, and you coming in there with the right protective gear. You coming in there with your body armor on. You coming in with your Kevlar on, because you know what? You can shoot, but you're not going to penetrate. Doesn't that make sense? At New Life Veterans, we're going to teach you everything about Title 38 Part 4. At the New Life Insider program, we're going to teach you step by step. We're going to give you unlimited telephone consultations. We're going to teach you how to write the statement support a claim so you can have that bulletproof claim. All right. We're going to teach you how to add supplement evidence that, are, that weighs way more than their opinions from the Bureau of Veterans Appeals, from the Library of Medicine websites. We're going to teach you how to notarize and sign all of the paperwork, your lay statements and everything. We're going to teach you how to add the right information to make it palatable for not only a service connection, but a high rating by that VA rater that got the opinion from the CMP examiner. The, VNC, the CMP examiner is going to send a notification over to your regional office. Wherever you live, and there's a regional office there, okay? They're going to receive that communication at the office say, oh, this guy didn't even have a medical connection. This is my opinion, and they don't have any, they have rationale. And guess what that VA rate That's a part of the GS9. That VA rate is probably not even college educated, educated. He's just going to take what that doctor said verbatim and strike you down and not have the Brinks truck come to your bank account. If you want to win your claim, 
and not only win your claim, but have a high value claim for you and your family. Go to newlifeveterans.com. The link should be in the description or comments. New Life is spelled N-U-L-I-F-E, veterans.com. Let's start a free consultation today. Let's look at the opportunities. Let's guide you through the process for a high value claim for you and your family. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.